Good evening. My name is Roderick Calloway. I'm a veteran. And 12 years ago, I'll speak on my experience with electromagnetic radiation. Uh, 12 years ago, I received a shock. Basically, I had chronic fatigue syndrome. At that time, the only medical attention I could get was from the VA. The VA told me that because I suffered from PTSD, it was probably all in my mind. Um, fortunately, I discovered naturopathic doctor, went to him, and he diagnosed me with um, basically adrenal fatigue. Subsequently, my recuperation allowed me to move around in and out of my house. But bear in mind, while I was in my house, I was constantly on the computer trying to find a way to answer the question of what was happening to my body. All of the symptoms that I was receiving, were they from chronic fatigue or were they from something else? I didn't know. I noticed that as I got better and I started to move in and out of my house, I felt better outside of my house than I did in my house. This subsequently led me to do an experiment because I've been reading and I realized that there were people who were suffering from electromagnetic radiation symptoms. So I decided to start experimenting. and before I'd go to sleep at night. Bear in mind, I only got four hours of sleep average. I started turning the Wi-Fi off. Sure enough, first night, I woke up five and a half hours of sleep. I said, maybe I'm on to something here. And I started reading further and further. And not to get past my three minutes, but I was determined and have become aware that this radiation does affect our bodies. And if that's 4G, what's 5G gonna do? Especially to people who are disabled, older, and already suffering from chronic diseases. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Is a cell tower going up in your neighborhood? If it's not now, it may soon. Wireless carriers are installing millions of them across the country to enable the new, faster 5G cell phone technology. But tonight, Julie Watts asked the question you're not supposed to ask. Are there legitimate health concerns? It's keeping John Heestand up at night. This new pole outside his bedroom window where Verizon will soon install a next generation cell tower just feet from a school. This would be a big tower pushing out radiation outside of our bedroom window 24 hours a day, seven days a week for many years. It's called a small cell or distributed antenna system, similar to this one in San Francisco. The industry says they're safe. Many in Piedmont aren't convinced. Our daughter is a cancer survivor. 13-year-old Sophia has been one of many petitioning the city council to deny this cell tower and others. I'm also a brain cancer survivor and I am against the cell towers. I mostly talked about my cancer and how it affected me. But according to federal law, the city simply can't consider health concerns. It's outlined in this small section of the Telecommunications Act based on science from 1996 to turn your phone on or off back when this was the height of technology. But if cities do consider health, the cell companies can sue. So with few legal arguments to deny a cell tower, they're popping up outside bedroom windows and school campuses, despite objections from across the country. 5G can be a tremendous boom to California, but only if it can be put up quickly and easily. Hayward Assemblymember Bill Quark co-authored legislation that would make it even harder for cities like Piedmont to object to a tower. You wouldn't have to go through the planning commission through the city council. The former NASA scientist says he may resurrect the bill recently vetoed by the governor. I know scientifically that putting up these cell phones, cell phone towers is safe. But the International Association of Firefighters disagrees. They began opposing cell towers on fire stations after firefighters complained of health problems. These firefighters developed symptoms. Dr. Gunnar Heuser conducted a pilot study on firefighters at a station with cell towers. And the symptoms included problems with memory, problems with intermittent confusion, 
problem is weakness. Hoiser says their brain scans suggest even low-level RF can cause cell damage, and he worries about more vulnerable groups like kids. So we found abnormal brain function in all of the firefighters we examined. So, following lobbying by firefighters, Cork and his co-author exempted fire stations from their bill, making them one place cell companies couldn't put a tower. This is the first piece of legislation that I think anyone's aware of where somebody got an exemption because they were concerned about health. Did they tell you at all about the all study? All I know is that when the firefighters ask, you know, I do what they ask me to do. Because they're strong lobbyists? Yes. So if, say, school teachers and parents had a strong lobby and they asked you to pass something that would prevent these from going up near schools, would you do that? If I couldn't get the votes any other way. Firefighter and cancer survivor Tony Stefani notes... It's not only firefighters, it's the people that live in the general vicinity, vicinity of these towers. Current regulations don't take into account continuous low-level exposure from these small cells 24 hours a day. More of these studies have to be done. There are 230 scientists from 41 countries who have apparently reviewed more than 2,000 peer-reviewed studies, and they're calling on the World Health Organization to do more studies. They're not convinced that, that this is safe. I think doing more studies is is always a good thing. Do you think that maybe you should consider putting a pause on legislation that speeds up these towers until there's definitive evidence that there is no harm? We can do a lot of studies and there are people right now, believe it or not, who are sure the world is flat. 